Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ramadan kamin. Ramadan mubarak. Welcome to the final of Ikra Talent Show. The first ever talent show done in Ramadan on Ikra Bangla TV. I hope you've enjoyed the episode so far. Um, big thank you to all our contestants that took part. It was an amazing performance from everyone. Very brave of them, very courageous. And a big thank you from all our judges who I'll introduce again shortly because we are now in the final. That's right, today is the final and we have six contestants that are through to the final. So we will be seeing and hearing their performance. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I hope you'll enjoy today's show, inshallah. Hope your Ramadan has been going well as well. Before I begin with the uh, performances, I'd like to give a few recognitions. So first and foremost, a big thank you to the four sponsors of this first ever talent show program on Ikra Bangla. And these four sponsors are Madinatul Ulum, Habibpur Madrasha, Jamiatul Khair, Al Islamia in Silet, Bishnat Madani Madrasa, and lastly, the Al Khair Foundation. So Alhamdulillah. May, may they all gain the rewards for donating and for sponsoring this program and allowing this program to be a success, alhamdulillah. And now I'm going to come over to our judges, inshallah, and I shall introduce our judges from closest to me all the way to the end. So first and foremost, um, welcome to Ustad Maulana Abdul Basit. Assalamu alaikum. Secondly, I'd like to introduce Sheikh Maulana Abdul Muntaqin. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Next, I'd like to introduce Sheikh Al Hadith, Mufti Abdurrahman. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam. Next, I'd like to introduce Sheikh Maulana Foyez Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa Then I'd like to introduce Ustad Maulana Hussein Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Hafiz Hussein Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. That's the introduction of our judges done. I've introduced our four sponsors. Now it's the main people of the show, and I have my six performance for performers sitting at the front row. Welcome back, everybody. You all feeling good? Inshallah. Yeah. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. And thank you to our four semi finalists that didn't make it through but have joined us. So, welcome, guys. You guys feeling good? Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Well done to all ten of you for giving amazing performances. I hope you at home have enjoyed the performances too. The, uh, the format that we will do this final is very simple. All six performances will be done individually, uh, but this time round we shall not be taking any comments from the judges. The judges will be busy away writing down all of their scoring and comments to save for the final, or um, well, to save for the prize giving, shall I say, and to announce. So we will have all six performances today, and then inshallah we will close today's program, and you can join us for the next when we announce the winners and give out the prize, inshallah. So I hope you're ready at home. I hope the judges are ready. I hope my uh, contestants are ready. We shall begin, Bismillah, with our first performance, which will be Zishan Mia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zishan, and inshallah I will be doing the Mecca then. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hey, I'm a 
Everyone can join me saying, MashaAllah. Zishan, that's a brilliant opening. Take a seat. Uh, well done for being the brave one, I mean the first one to stand up and perform on tonight's, or today's final, shall I say. Alhamdulillah. Right, as I said at the beginning, I will not be taking any comments from the judges. The judges, as you can see, are busy writing away their scores for that first performance. Whilst they're doing that, I shall introduce our second performer, Mushab Khan. Come on to the stage, please. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name, my name is Musab Khan, and today I'll be telling you the story of, of how we got the five daily salah. When on the journey of Mi'raj, when Muhammad sallam travelled from Masjid al-Aqsa to the heavens, he travelled on a beast known as Buraq, and this beast could travel as the light, as the, at the speed of light. When Muhammad sallam reached the first heaven, he met, he met with Adam alayhi salam. On Adam alayhi salam's right shoulder, he saw all the people that's gonna go to Jannah, and on. Adam alayhi salam's left shoulder, he saw all the people that's going to go to Jahannam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so sad, he started to cry. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam traveled to the second heaven and met Yahya, Yahya alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. Then he met more prophets in the third and fourth and fifth and so and so. Then when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam reached to the seventh uh, sky, he, he went to the Sijratul Muntaha. When he reached Sajratul Muntaha, Allah gave him a message of 50 daily salah. <coughs> when Muhammad وسلم, was going back to earth to tell people of what Allah has given them, he, Muhammad وسلم, met with Musa. Musa وسلم, asked, what was the message about? Muhammad وسلم, replied, 50 daily salah. Musa وسلم, was shocked and said, oh, this is too much for your ummah. Nowadays, people are lazy. So... Go back to Allah and tell him to lower it down. Muhammad وسلم, did as Musa وسلم, told him to do and went back to Allah. <coughs> and Allah lowered it down to 45 daily salah. Then Muhammad وسلم, went back to earth to tell people of 45 daily salah. But then Musa وسلم, said, how much did he lower it down to? Then Muhammad وسلم, said, 45 daily salah. Musa وسلم, Musa alayhi, Musa alayhi, then said, this is still too much <coughs> for your ummah. No, go back to Allah and tell him to lower it down. Then Muhammad وسلم, went back to Allah and Allah lowered it down to 30. And the same process happened, uh, kept on going until it went down to five daily salah. Muhammad وسلم, met with Musa وسلم, and Musa وسلم, said, how much did he lower it down to now? And then Muhammad وسلم, said, five daily salah. Musa وسلم, said, this is still too much, lower it down to one. But Muhammad وسلم, said, I have come to a point where I am ashamed to go back to Allah. At that moment, Allah spoke to Musa وسلم, and Muhammad وسلم, and said, whoever prays the five daily salah, it will be counted as 50 daily salah. Then Muhammad وسلم, went back to earth and told his ummah about the five daily salah. Thank you for listening to my story. Jazakumullah. MashaAllah, well done, Mushab. Brilliant second performance from us, right? We're going to be moving along very shortly. As you can see, our judges are head down and really um, putting the scores and their reviews of that second performance. But we are going to keep going. We are going to have our third performance, which is going to be Sarjish Hassan. You want to come up on stage, Sarjish?
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه أعد لهم جنات تجري جنات تجري تحت الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم Today, I stand before you to talk about the intense struggles of the early Muslims during the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the cause of Islam, guided by both the Qur'an and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Qur'an says in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 100, Allah will be pleased with the Muhajirun and the Ansar and those who follow them in good deeds and they will be pleased with him. He has prepared gardens, graced with flowing rivers for them to remain there forever. That is the supreme triumph. Allah also says in the Quran in Surah An Kabut, Ayah 69. And those who strive for us, we will surely guide them to our ways. And indeed, Allah is with the doers of the good. This verse encapsulates the essence of the struggle of the early Muslims. Despite facing intense challenges, they remain steadfast in their dedication to Allah's cause, knowing that their efforts won't go unrewarded. Furthermore, our beloved Nabi Wasallam said, according to a narration by Abu Hurairah, that, the stronger believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. <coughs> it also, the hadith also says to cherish that which benefits you in the hereafter. To seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to not lose heart. Sahih Bukhari, Book 46, Hadith 52. Picture the early days of Islam in Mecca, a time of much persecution and severe challenges. Yet despite these, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and the followers clung firm to their faith, driven by a commotion to the truth. Despite the risks involved, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and the Sahaba undertook the hijrah and persevered to establish a community based on the principles of Islam. This act of sacrifice and devotion lay, laid the foundation for the growth and spread of Islam. One pivotal moment in this journey was the Battle of Badr. Despite limited resources, having to face a formidable enemy and in a bad position, the Sahaba displayed unwavering courage, guided and inspired by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi who begged uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and trusted Allah's plan. This, this victory left an enduring mark and solidified the existence of Islam. Reflect also on the Battle of Uhud, a tapestry woven with bravery and resilience. Despite the losses, the Sahaba remained firm and stood alongside uh, beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Surah Al Imran, Ayah 146, Allah comforts them, promising unwavering support if they remain patient. And how many a prophet fought in battle and with him fought many religious scholars. 
but they never lost assurance due to what afflicted them in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor did they weaken or submit, and Allah loves the steadfast. As we strive to embody their virtues, we walk the same path that they walked. The Times example continues to guide us, echoing the words of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, Do not abuse my companions, for if any one of you paid gold equal to Mount Uhud in Allah's cause, it would not be equal to a mud or even half a mud to that of the companions. Sahih Bukhari, Book 62, Hadith 23. In conclusion, the struggle of the early Muslims serve as a timeless reminder of the power of faith, sacrifice and per uh, perseverance. May we strive to implement their feelings into an example into our own lives, seeking guidance from the Quran and the teachings of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da tahtaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salam ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum Allah khairan for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. MashaAllah. That's our third of the finalist performance done. We shall move straight on to our fourth performance, which will be done by Taha Rahman. Taha, if you want to go up, and you're going to do us a story. So when you're ready, introduce yourself and begin your story, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Taha Rahman and I will be telling you the story of Habil and Qabil. So you see, Adam wasalam, had two sons named Habil and Qabil. As a father and a prophet, he would tell his sons to do many good things. <coughs> One day, he advised his sons to make a sacrifice for Allah in order to thank him for all the blessings they had. He explained that they should give the best of their wealth for Allah who is pure and only accepts the one which is pure. <coughs> Both Habil and Qabil put forward their sacrifices. However, since Qabil was a bit stingy, he did not give the best of his wealth. In those days, to show that a sacrifice had been accepted, Allah would send a firestorm to take away the sacrifice. Once this firestorm had passed by, they noticed that Habil's sacrifice was accepted, but Qabil's was still where they left it. When Qabil realized, instead of seeking forgiveness of his wrongdoing, he became really angry and started to destroy his father and accusing him for only making dua for Habil and not for him, which was not true. It was only an excuse to hide his embarrassment. Qabil became really jealous of his brother and his jealousy and anger grew and grew until he decided to kill him. So he went up to him and told him that he was here to cause a murder on him. Habil then told Qabil that Allah only accepts the actions of those who fear him, not the actions of those who don't fear him. He also told him that Habil was one of the people that feared Allah's punishment. Habil would always answer the best ways on his brother's anger, which was a sign that his heart was good. The words of Habil made Qabil come down a bit and, he, and Qabil decided to walk away from that horrible action. However, that was for a short while. He kept thinking about what happened and then Shaitan had come to Qabil and reminded him of the anger and jealousy that he had towards his brother. Once more, Qabil lost his temper and then he killed his brother. When his senses, when his senses came back, he noticed what a horrible action he had done. He had killed his beloved brother that loved him so much. When Qabil killed Habil, it was the first ever murder to happen on planet Earth and Habil was the first person to die on Earth. He, be, he became really sad and started to cry, but sadly it was too late. Habil was dead and Qabil had no idea what to do with his brother's body. That's when Allah had sent a crow to dig and search for something. And then Qabil said, Oh my misery, why couldn't I have been like this crow and covered up my brother's body? That made him even more sad and feel guilty. So then he buried his brother inside, inside the soil. After mentioning this story in the Quran, Allah said, 
Because of this, if you kill someone, it's like you killed all humankind in the world. And if you save somebody's life, it's like you save all humankind's life in the world. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also one warned us about jealousy. Jealousy destroys all our good deeds, just like fire destroys our good uh, wood. Jazakallah. Barakallahu Mashallah. Taha, thank you very much for that. Take a seat. Um, that's four performances done for us in this final um, episode. So I am now going to ask for Serena Tamrin. So go up. Serena, are you going to do a speech for us? So Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi Shrahli Sodri, Waya Sirli Amri, Wahlul Ukhlata Milisani, Yafkohu Koli, Rabbana Zidna Ilma, Rabbana Zidna Ilma, Rabbana Zidna Ilma. I will give you a speech about Ramadan. What is Ramadan? Well, Ramadan is a month of one of the five pillars of Islam, fasting. Ramadan is talked about in many ayahs of the Quran. And I will recite to you one of these ayahs. Surah Baqarah, ayah number 183. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon Oh you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was for those before you, so perhaps you'll be mindful of Allah so that you may achieve taqwa. Okay, what is taqwa, you may ask? Taqwa means to be more obedient to Allah. <coughs> taqwa is to be attached to Allah, to be conscious of Allah. So we are given the order by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fast so that we are mindful of Him, so that we have taqwa. Fasting is the main purpose of Ramadan, as I mentioned earlier, but it is not the only purpose. Some of you might say that Ramadan is a time of fasting, but Ramadan is so much more than that. Ramadan is a month of blessing. Ramadan is a month of goodness, a month of cure. Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. Ramadan is a time of peace and happiness. Ramadan is a month of mercy, the month of achieving paradise. Ramadan is a month of Quran, the month of revelation, the month of celebration of being a Muslim. Ramadan is the most important month where we practice controlling ourselves and our desires. Ramadan is a time where we think about the poor and put ourselves in their unfortunate positions and their sad situations, where we feel their pain and their suffering and their need for food and water. Ramadan is a month that teaches us to be grateful for the amazing things we have and the wonderful life we live. Ramadan is a month that teaches us many things, one of which is taqwa. We must try to spend this blessed month wisely. There are so many blessings in Ramadan, so why should we put this opportunity to waste? Let's make the most of this amazing month. You don't know if you'll even be able to spend the next Ramadan. So let's try to earn as many rewards as possible. Let's spend more time reading the Quran, praying our tahajjud and taraweeh, and let's try to spend more time getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's try to give par charity to the poor and needy, and I urge you to make dua for our dear Muslims and brothers and sisters around the world. Try to make some goals to accomplish by the end of the month, such as reading the whole Quran during Ramadan. You can make it a competition with friends or family to motivate you. Also, remember to, pr to pay the right amount of zakat al-fitr by Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and make it easier for us to, learn, to earn rewards and to do lots of good deeds. Jazakallahu khairan for listening and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum So we will have our final of the six performances of the finals today, inshallah. So I'm going to ask Samiha to go up on stage, inshallah. Uh, Samiha is going to perform a uh, nasheed for us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I'm going to be saying a nasheed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Salatun salam ala al-Mustafa Rasulul Iman bi nur as-safa Salatun salam ala al-Mustafa Rasulul Iman bi nur as-safa Habibul ilah anarul haya wa qalbi yara kan mislil kamar bi marihir rasul yazidul amal wa atil qabul bi khairil amal salatun salam ala al mustafa rasulul iman bi nur as safa merci bi rasul ahmad mustafa U basalan nik nashiman u bi majida salatun salam ala al mustafa rasulul iman bi nur as safa merci bi rasul ahmad mustafa u basalan nik nashiman u bi majida ummati ummati قالها المصطفى يومها كل عبد بالرسول اكتفى أمتي أمتي قالها المصطفى يومها كل عبد بالرسول اكتفى صلاة سلام على المصطفى رسول الإيمان بنور الصفا Merci bi rasul Ahmad Mustafa u basran nik nash iman lu bi majida Mashallah Samiha take a seat thank you very much that's uh well done Samiha that was very good well done um for all six performances i'm going to say takbir Mashallah well done all six of you right That is the performances done for this final and the six performers are done now they're going to see, be very anxious because they want to know who's going to be awarded which prize which we will not do now so as you can see the judges have been very busy i'm going to close the program and join us on the next episode when we will be announcing the winners mm -hmm. and giving out the prizes, prizes inshallah so don't go away too far it won't be too long when we come back We hope to see you again for the next one. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.